This is the man in black here to introduce this weekly half hour of suspense. <laughs> Tonight, from Hollywood, we proudly present one of the most compelling actresses of our time, Miss Agnes Moorhead. Miss Moorhead appears in a new study in terror by Lucille Fletcher called Sorry, Wrong Number. This story of a woman who accidentally overheard a conversation with death and who strove frantically to prevent murder from claiming an innocent victim is tonight's tale of Suspense. If you have been with us on these Tuesday nights, you will know that suspense is compounded of mystery and suspicion and dangerous adventure. In this series are tales calculated to intrigue you, stir your nerves, to offer you a precarious situation, then withhold the solution until the last possible moment. And so it is with sorry wrong number, and the performance of Agnes Moorhead. We again hope to keep you in suspense. <laughs> oh, how awful. How unspeakably awful. Operator, operator, I've just been cut off. Well, Operator, I was supposed to be calling Murray Hill 40098, but it wasn't. Some wires must have got crossed. I was cut into a wrong number. And I, I've i just heard the most dreadful thing, something about a murder. And, and Operator, you simply have to retrace that call at once. I know it was a wrong number, and I had no business listening. But these two men, they were cold-blooded fiends. And they are going to murder somebody, some poor, innocent woman who was all alone in a house near a bridge. And we've got to stop them. We've got to. It doesn't matter what number I was calling. This was a wrong number. And you dialed it for me. And we've got to find out what it was immediately. Oh, why are you so stupid? It doesn't matter what number I was calling. What time is it? Oh, uh, I don't want the chief operator. I think it's perfectly shameful. Now look, it was obviously a case of some little slip of the finger. I told you to try Murray Hill 40098 for me, and you dialed it, but your finger must have slipped, and I was connected with some other number. And I could hear them, but they couldn't hear me. Now, I simply fail to see why you couldn't make that same mistake again on purpose. Why couldn't you try to dial Murray Hill 40098? in the same careless way. All right, dial Murray Hill 4 0098. Only carelessly, please. Thank you. Oh, busy. I know Murray Hill 4 0098 is busy. Operator, operator, you didn't try to get that wrong number at all. I asked you explicitly. And all you did was dial correctly. Can't you for once forget what number I'm calling and do something for me? Well, I want to trace that call. It's my civic duty. And it's your civic duty to trace that call and apprehend those dangerous killers. And if you won't, all right, get me the chief operator. Oh, very well. Please do. All this talk can't make anyone understand. It takes so much time to get anyone. Chief Operator, I want you to trace a call, a telephone call, immediately. I don't know where it came from or who was making it, but it's absolutely necessary that it be tracked down 
because it was about a murder that someone's planning. A terrible, cold-blooded murder of a poor, innocent woman tonight at 11.15. Can you trace it for me? Can you track down those men? It depends. It depends on what? Has it been disconnected? Of course it's been disconnected. That was at least five minutes ago. And they didn't seem to be the type that would make a long call. My name? My name is Mrs. Stevenson. Mrs. Elbert Stevenson. But listen, my telephone number is Plaza 32093. But if you go on wasting all this time, why do I want the call traced? Why? Oh, oh, no reason. I mean, I merely felt very strongly that something ought to be done about it. These men sounded like killers. They're dangerous. They're going to murder this woman 1115 tonight. And I thought the police ought to know. No, I haven't reported it to the police. Well, no, not yet. Yes, but meanwhile, oh, for heaven's sakes, you mean to tell me I can't check this call as a private individual when there's going to be a murder without getting tied up in all this red tape? Oh, why, it's perfectly idiotic. I'll call the police. Oh, ridiculous. I never heard of such nonsense. Police department. I can't see why you have to go through all this business. The police department. Get me the police department, please. Oh, dear. Do you have to dial? Can't you ring them direct? All this time wasted. Police department. Oh, this is Mrs. Stevenson. Mrs. Elbert Smythe Stevenson of 5353 North Sutton Place. I'm calling to report a murder. I, I mean, the, the murder hasn't been committed yet, but I just overheard plans for it over the telephone, over a wrong number that the operator gave me. Yes, positively. It was a perfectly definite murder. I heard their plans distinctly. Two men were talking, and they were going to murder some woman at 11.15 tonight. She lived in a house near a bridge. Are you concentrating on this? You sound sleepy. And there was a private patrolman on the street. He was going to go around for a beer on 2nd Avenue. And there was a third man, a client, who was paying to have this poor woman murdered. They were going to take her rings and bracelets and use a knife. Well, it's unnerved me dreadfully, and I'm not well, and I'm very nervous. Oh, dear. My name is Mrs. Stevenson, Mrs. Albert Stevenson. Oh, my address is 53 North Sutton Place. That's near a bridge, the Queensboro Bridge, you know, and we have a private patrolman on our street, and 2nd Avenue is the next street. Oh, well, I was calling Murray Hill for 0098, but that wasn't the number I overheard. I mean, Murray Hill 40098 is my husband's office. He's working late tonight. And his line was busy, and I was trying to reach him to ask him to come home. I'm an invalid, you know, and it's the maid's night out. And I, you'll look into it? The whole thing calls for a search, a complete and thorough search of the whole city. I'm very near the bridge, and I'm not far from 2nd Avenue, and I know I'd feel a whole lot better if you sent around a radio car to this neighborhood at once. Oh, I, I don't know. Only the coincidence is so horrible. 
It sounds like this neighborhood. Second Avenue, the patrolman, the bridge. Yes, and maybe it wasn't a long distance call I heard. I'm all alone and very nervous. My maid, Eloise, she's a big girl. She weighs 200 pounds. She's too lazy to bring up my breakfast tray. It's her night out, and my husband, Albert, he's crazy about me. He just adores me. Waits on me hand and foot. Scarcely left my side since I took sick 12 years ago. He's working at, I don't care how many other matters you have on your desk. This is not routine. It's murder, and it requires immediate attention. Oh, you, 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 idiot. Idiot, idiot, stupid, stupid. Oh, why doesn't Albert come home? Why doesn't he? I'll dial the operator again. I just can't. Operator, for heaven's sakes, will you ring that Murray Hill 40098 number again? I can't think what's keeping him so long. Well, try, try. I don't see why he doesn't answer. It makes me so nervous. I can hear it. You don't have to tell me. I know it's busy. If I could only get out of this bed for a little while, if I could get a breath of fresh air, or just lean out of the window and see the street. Hello, Albert? Hello? 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 Oh, what's the matter with this phone? Hello? 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 Oh, for heaven's sakes, who is this? Hello? 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 Who is trying to call me? What are they trying to do to me? Operator, I don't know what's the matter with this telephone, but it's positively driving me crazy. I've never seen such inefficient, miserable service. Now look, I'm an invalid and I'm very nervous, and I'm not supposed to be annoyed much longer. Well, everything seems to be the trouble. I haven't had one bit of satisfaction out of one call I've made this evening. The whole world could be murdered for all you people care. And now, my phone keeps ringing. Ringing and ringing and ringing every five seconds or so. And when I pick it up, there's no one there. I don't want you to test my phone for me. I want you to put that call through, whatever it is. Oh, you can't do that? And why, may I ask? And meanwhile, I've got to sit here in my bed, suffering every time that phone rings, imagining everything. You're not trying to check the trouble for me. Oh, what's the use of talking to you? You're so stupid. But, but I know the dial system is automatic. Oh, young woman, I don't know your name. But there are ways of finding out. And I'm going to report you to your superiors for the most unpardonable rudeness. Oh, give me the business office at once. Dial it direct. I'll do no such thing. I don't even know the number. Oh, you, what's the use? Oh, dear. Oh, for heaven's sakes. Hello? Hello? Stop ringing me. Do you hear? Answer me. Who is this? Do you realize you're driving me crazy? Who's calling me? What are you doing it for? Now, now stop it. Stop it. Stop it, I say. If you don't stop ringing me, I'm going to call the police. Do you hear? Hello? Hello? Yes, yes. This is Plaza 32098. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Who? Oh, Western Union. Yes. This is Mrs. Albert Stevenson. 
Will you read the telegram, please? Yes, yes, that's the address. Darling, terribly sorry. Tried to get you the last hour, but the line busy. Leaving for Boston 11 p.m. tonight on urgent business. Back tomorrow afternoon. Keep happy, signed Albert. <sighs> oh, no. No, I don't want a copy of the message. Good night. Oh, Albert, how could you? How could you? When you knew I was going to be alone, I can't be alone tonight. Well, if I'm alone one more second, I'll go mad. I don't care what he says or what the expense is. I'm a sick woman. I'm entitled to a little consideration. Information. I want the telephone number of Henchley Hospital. No, I don't know the street address. It's a very small, private, and exclusive hospital where I had my appendix out two years ago. Henchley. H-E-N-C-H-L-Y. Please hurry. And please, what is the time? Oh, oh for heaven's sakes, I've no time to dial. What is the number of Henchley Hospital? Butterfile 39970. Is that Henchley Hospital? I want the nurse's registry. I said I want the nurse's registry at once. I want a trained nurse. I want to hire her immediately for the night. The nature of the case is nerves. I'm very nervous. I need soothing and companionship. You see, my husband is away and I'm, no, I'm not under a doctor's care at the moment. I was a patient in your hospital two years ago. And after all, I do expect to pay this person for attending me. Well, this is an emergency case and absolutely necessary. I'm a sick woman. I'm, I'm very upset. Very. I'm alone in this house and I'm an invalid. And tonight I heard, oh, and tonight I overheard a telephone conversation that upset me dreadfully. A woman is going to be murdered when a train crosses a bridge. In fact, if someone doesn't come at once, I'm afraid I'll go out of my mind. Miss Phillips? And do you have to wait until Miss Phillips comes in? And when do you expect Miss Phillips in? She went out to supper at 11 o'clock. 11 o'clock? But it's not 11 yet. Where's my clock? Oh, my clock stopped. I thought it was running down. What time is it? 14 minutes past 11? What was that? That? Why that click? Just now, in my own telephone, as though someone had lifted the receiver off the hook, off the extension telephone downstairs. But I did hear it. There's someone in this house, someone downstairs in the kitchen. And they're listening to me now. They're, I won't pick it up. I won't let them hear me. I'll be quiet. And they'll think, but, but if I don't call someone now while they're still down there, there'll be no time. I've got to get that operator. Operator, operator, I'm in desperate trouble. I don't dare speak louder. I, there's someone listening. Can you hear me now? But you've got to hear me. Oh, please, you've got to help me. There's someone in this house, someone who's going to murder me. And you've got to get in touch with the, oh, there it is. Did you hear it? 
He's put it down. He's put down the extension phone. He's coming up the stairs. Give me the police department. Give me the police. I can hear him. Hurry, hurry. Police department. Precinct 43. Sergeant Martin speaking. Police department. Precinct 43. Sergeant Martin speaking. Yes, yes, sir. What, what, sir? Wrong number? Okay. Good night, sir. And so it closes. Sorry, wrong number. Starring Miss Agnes Moran. Tonight's tale of suspense. <laughs>